Hi, Perspective Weather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday, May 1st. An active weather pattern continues in the Mid Atlantic region and indeed for much of the eastern half of the nation. Looks like we'll have rain threats here in the Mid Atlantic region right into the upcoming weekend. There's a meander and frontal system right now in the Mid Atlantic. A cold front arrives on Friday night. That front stalls out and allows low pressure to bring more rain to the region for later Saturday into Sunday. One of the main culprits for this active weather pattern uh, is the fact that there are still numerous cold air outbreaks around, and it looks like that will be the case going forward for the next a week or two. We'll kind of focus in on that over the next uh, several minutes here. And as long as there's cold air outbreaks this time of the year, not only do you have rain threats in much of the eastern half of the nation, but you have severe weather threats. Yesterday, for example, we had some cold air crossing over from the Rockies into the middle part of the country, and indeed, tornadoes broke out in places like Oklahoma. And certainly, given the fact that cold air outbreaks are still on the horizon here over the next week to 10 days, very likely could have some more severe weather outbreaks in the coming week to 10 days or so. Let's take a look at the current surface map. First of all, we have a frontal system, a backdoor cool front that has slid from the northeast to the southwest, backed up by this high pressure system just off the New England coastline. Low level winds have shifted around in Philadelphia, for example, New York City to east or southeast, bringing in cooler air, cooler compared to yesterday. The ocean is still quite chilly this time of the year. Even down in D.C., they'll feel the effects of this backdoor cool front several degrees cooler today than it was on, on, on uh, Tuesday. Lots of clouds around, maybe some patchy drizzle, light rain at times, especially north of the Mason-Dixon line. This frontal system then turns around late tonight and heads to the north and east as a warm front pushes much, much warmer air into D.C., Philadelphia, and even New York City during the day on Thursday. Expect at least 85 degrees for highs tomorrow afternoon in D.C., likely 80 degrees in Philadelphia, and uh, certainly in the low 70s a possibility in New York City. This low pressure area will push to the north and east, and that will help to push that warm front back towards the uh, uh, New England area during the day on Thursday. And ultimately, this frontal system drops southeast, crosses the region on Friday night, again, likely with a round of showers and thunderstorms. That front then stalls in the Mid Atlantic around and, and la allows low pressure to produce additional showers and thunderstorms in the Mid Atlantic later Saturday into the day on Sunday. Well, here's the current radar loop. First of all, a few things I want to point out here. Not much going on in the Mid Atlantic region in terms of precipitation. It looks like it'll be generally a rain free day, uh, or excuse me, a rain free morning, but then Watch for some patchy drizzle, maybe some light rain this afternoon. And then overnight tonight, there can be a shower or a thunderstorm as that frontal system advances to the north as a warm front. Notice here, lots of blue showing up. Cold enough for snow right now across the northern Great Lakes. Cold enough for accumulating snow over some of the Rockies, Wyoming into Colorado. Really quite an amazing uh, cold air outbreak here, not only today, but for the last few days. Of course, we had... Snow in Chicago that amounted to two plus inches. That was the latest they ever recorded. Two plus inches of snow. They did get some snow in May, uh, in, back in 1940, May 1st, May 2nd. They got an inch or so. But again, this was the latest two plus inch snow event in Chicago uh, over the uh, weekend. And uh, earlier this week in Colorado, was some of the coldest temperatures ever experienced, at least for daily highs in the uh, latter part of the month of April. So certainly not unusual for snow to fall in the Rockies in April or in Chicago, but this kind of magnitude is a little bit unusual. Again, they have not had a two plus inch snow event this late in the season in Chicago. Denver and Boulder on Monday held in the low to mid 30s, very, very cold for the latter part of April. And again, yesterday uh, with cold air to the north and west, a very warm air to the south and east. Tornadoes broke broke out uh, in the central part of Oklahoma, for example, and lots and lots of heavy rainfall as well. Well, let's take a look at last night's 6E GFS model run. We're looking at 
850 millibar temperature anomalies. By the way, excuse my voice, I've been battling a bad cold here. Main thing I want to emphasize here over these series of maps of the 850 temperature anomalies, how cold some of these air masses are. And again, cold air masses this time of the year, we're now into the beginning of May, can result in severe weather and certainly an active weather pattern. And over the next week to 10 days or so, lots of rain will fall over much of the eastern two-thirds of the nation. Here, very cold air mass right now over the northwestern U.S. Again, accumulating snow today in Wyoming, Colorado. Let's just keep moving forward. Warmer than normal, at least in the uh, middle part of the atmosphere over the mid-Atlantic region here. Low-level easterly winds will keep it below normal down at the surface in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. But let's keep moving forward again. I just want to point out these cold air outbreaks. Here we are now over the upcoming weekend. Another cold shot arriving in the northern U.S. And it just keeps on coming here now in the early part of next week. Even a cold air mass slides in off the Pacific into California during the early part of next week. And that is associated with a strong upper level wave. Well, look at this by the early to middle part of next week. The northern U.S. still well below normal. That pattern will continue for the next week to 10 days or so. Well, now let's take a look at the surface forecast maps of the 6E GFS model run. Again, not much going on in the I-95 corridor right now, but there certainly can be some patchy drizzle, light rain at times later today with that onshore flow of air. Let's keep moving forward here. A few showers could break out overnight tonight as that front turns around, heads to the north as a warm front, maybe even a thunderstorm. And then on Thursday... Off to the races in terms of temperatures, they'll climb well up in the 80s in D.C., maybe the warmest day of the year so far with high temperatures, perhaps 85, 87 degrees or so uh, in the D.C. metro region, and 80 degrees likely in Philadelphia as well. Then tomorrow night, pretty good shot, shot at showers and thunderstorms Thursday night in the uh, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City corridor, and then we'll move forward here on Friday cold front system approaches, causes more showers and thunderstorms, especially during the p.m. hours on Friday, going into Friday night. That front then stalls out right in this area right here by the upcoming weekend, and we have another pretty impressive low-pressure area riding up along that boundary zone this weekend. Throws more rain in the Mid-Atlantic region, especially later Saturday, Saturday night, into the morning hours and Sunday, and some of that rain Saturday night could be heavy at times. There is some hope that by the latter part of Sunday, northwest winds finally kick in, pushing some drier air, and there will be an improving trend later Sunday going into Sunday night, and certainly it looks like by the early part of next week we'll actually start off with pretty nice conditions. But between now and then, several rounds of showers and thunderstorms a little cooler today, but much warmer tomorrow with high temperatures at least 80 degrees in much of the I-95 corridor region. That's it for now. For PerspectiveWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.